Hi everybody and welcome to Art Day. Today I'm having the third of the characters for my DSA group. Um, this is actually my second character, so I'm playing in two different kinds of campaigns. This is the one that I started a couple of weeks ago with um, the parents and grandparents of Sebastian. So this is the bigger group and I'm playing a human that uh, is, well, uh, very capable when it comes to riding horses. So I thought, oh, I'm not only going to put in my character and I'm not going to only paint that, but I'm going to have a horse with her. And uh, that's what I'm starting with. Um, two uh, shades of a light brown and a little bit of a dark brown for the darkest shadows. And sorry for the weird noise, but I got to put down my shades here the sun is directly in my eye and it prevents me from seeing my screen very well so I, th I think that was quiet enough but I don't know anyways uh, so I started with uh, a sketch first this is one of the smaller pieces again because I want to put it in my other notebook so I'm having a different kind of a notebook uh, for the two campaigns one is pink one is blue you've seen uh, Gilia uh, I think yeah two art days ago my dwarf and she's got the blue notebook uh, and uh, today I'm working in the pink one it is the same size so I'm working actually on the other half of the watercolor sheet that I used for uh, Aldare Loyens one last time so I used a bigger pad there because I painted her on a DIN A4 um, size of uh, paper and the rest of the paper sheet because the, the watercolor paper pad that I do have is uh, 30 by 40 centimeters. So the second half here I'm using for my own character for the big campaign and uh, I'm coloring all the brown parts of the horse first. I'm working pretty much the same way that I worked last time. So I had a color scheme down already before I started painting. I knew what I wanted her to look like, what kind of clothes she was wearing, because um, I had thought about it. I actually painted this right after I painted Aldare. So all in one sitting and uh, I, I had time to think about my character, what I wanted for her, what I wanted her to look like. Because I've been playing her for a couple of um, weeks now and uh, I designed her, I knew what she was looking like. <clears throat> So I had the color scheme down before I started painting and I really liked the way uh, I painted Aldare, just like the sequence of things I uh, went through. So I uh, adapted that for this painting as well. So I'm having a lovely little horsey with me. I think uh, it looks really cute in the end, very friendly as horses do so often um, just yeah those big brown eyes they just make horses look friendly I think uh, so I'm liquefying all the brown pigment that I put down um, all in one go and I really like that kind of working when it comes to painting these uh, character pictures with Derwent. I would work way differently with watercolors, um, but with these pencils here, uh, it's just the way to go for me. And I think I will do that pretty much all the time from now on, if I know my complete color scheme for a painting. Sometimes I don't, and uh, then I would uh, go back to the way I colored my dwarf and uh, work in that kind of a sequence. But with the pictures that I pretty much have imprinted on my mind and where I just need to quote unquote copy what I see 
before my inner eye, I think I will go with this kind of uh, painting in the future because I just really liked it. I used a little bit of an Indian ink black, which is a brownish black for the eyes and um, the nostrils and the mane and such. You can see it has quite the brownish tint, though it is a black. It's not the dark brown that I used for shading the legs and such of the horse. Used a little bit of Payne's Gray for the hooves and also now for the sword. So the on the top of the sword, you can see it has a weird shape. It's actually a horse's head from the side. Uh, so I will use um, a black marker way later just to outline that a little more and make it a little more visible because I think I lost a tiny little bit of detail with the Derwent uh, on that particular part of the sword but uh, that can easily be remedied with just a tiny little bit of a black marker. So I went on to her hand, coloring that. Again, I used the Sicilian yellow, which is a muted kind of a yellow, uh, and that is the pencil that is closest to skin color for Caucasian uh, people. In the set uh, of the Derwents, I don't know how many pencils I do have. Is it 80, 100? I don't know. It's it's the full set um, of the pencils, like in the wooden case. I don't remember how many pencils there are, but this is the only pencil that you could use or that I think you could use for Caucasian, very light skin uh, in the set. If you go a little darker, you could use Ten, maybe. I don't know what the number of the pencil is. It's uh, 17 something, 1740 maybe. I don't remember. But I like to use the Sicilian yellow for the skin. So once I had these sections down, again, going in with my brush very controlled way of coloring with those barrel brushes and uh, I like I said in the last video I just really like it so I use these kinds of brushes for uh, Derwent or for any kind of uh, piece where I really want to control the color flow once I put water to it. All the skin tones are down. Now on to her shirt. Um, I'm thinking she has like a linen shirt, something like that. But well, she's out and about on the quest with everybody. It's not going to be cream colored. So I gave her a little more of a brownish tint, a little darker, but still light in comparison to the leather armor that she's wearing and that I'm now coloring in. I went uh, darker with that not very dark still a brown tone uh, i'm using a bark that's uh 19 something i think as a pencil it, all the pencils that i used are listed on the blog so if you go to my webpage it's in the description box below pinselgeschichten.de if you go there and uh, enter the video name into the search bar, you will be directed to the accordant blog post. And there I'm listing all the pencils that I used. So if you have the set and you like the color combo that I'm using here, you just can look them up and uh, see what color I used for what part of the painting. Um, but the very dark brown, I really like that for shading um, any kind of brown tones but also some of the blue tones because I really like to shade brown with blue and blue with brown but the indigo in this particular set is a little too strong too vibrant too blueish for me that's why I'm not using the blue on this particular painting here to shade my browns but the bark uh, pencil is perfect for me to uh, shade these lighter 
uh, tones of brown here. <coughs> so I'm painting her armor now. She has a leather vest, a little a leather vest, and uh, armor also on her lower arm and on her hand. And uh, oof, my legs are killing me. Um, and I'm just coloring that in. And by having the base coat color down, so the light brown here on the boot as well, and having the dark brown in at the same time before liquefying all the pigment, I get very smooth, very lovely transitions between the light areas and the dark areas. I went with a black for her pants. I think it is Indian ink black, the same that I used on the horse. And uh, I left a part out when coloring and just pulled the pigment into the section, like on her, what is it, right butt cheek. Um, as you can see, it's a little lighter because this is where the light hits. There's a tiny little bit of a reflection going on. So by not coloring a certain section of your painting and just pulling the pigment into it, you can get very lovely highlights without using any white pe uh, blah, 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 without using the white pencil or a different kind of a color from the set. That's something I like as well. So uh, the human character, also called Leo Line, as the video says, she is a ginger. Uh, she's actually having like a mahogany reddish brown hair. And I'm starting with the light tones, so the orange, the red uh, shades. And I'm going to put a tiny little bit of brown on top. I think I chose willow or oak to put on top. But I'm working a little different for the hair. I'm just shading all the red tones first, as you can see here. Um, and then I will liquefy that uh, pigment. Wait a hot second. And then put the brown tone on top just to mute down all the oranginess and the reddishness of the um, of the hair. Why I did that, uh, that's, he here's the thing. Inktense pencils behave like watercolors. You can move the pigment uh, until it is dry. Once it is dry, it stays there. It cannot be moved anymore. And when you layer something on top, it just really sits on top. You only can manipulate that particular layer and not the layers underneath. And I didn't want to muddy up the orange and the brown. So I'm I that that's why I'm using uh the layers on top. I did cut the footage from where I did let it dry. I would recommend maybe like 5 minutes uh between putting down uh, having put down the water and then adding another pencil on top, depending on how much water you're using. Uh, the, the paper should be dry to the touch before you put down the pencil, because if you do not, the pigment will not move. So you will just have those lines of the second layer on top and you cannot move the pigment anymore. So make sure that the pigment is dry on the, on the and the paper is dry to the touch before you add your second layer on top, which I did here with the brown and that you can see. The orange still shines through. It is It still sits where it was. Light and dark sit where they were but I just have a little bit of a brown on top to mute it down. I went in with a little more of the orange uh, pencil afterwards and just added a tiny little bit on the highlights as you just saw. Uh, just right from the pencil. I didn't put down the pencil onto the paper. That's something that you can do. Just pull the pigment with your brush right from the pencil instead of putting the pencil down to the paper. So I didn't want to give her a green um, grounding, like a green ground as I did before with all the other characters. I went more for an autumn-y dry leaves kind of a look because she's, well, quote unquote, buried in the soft leaves here because uh, you can see the... Uh, uh, 
like the foot part of her boot and part of the knee and such so I wanted a little bit of a different look and I think it works really well <coughs> excuse me with the ginger hair to have these colors also be in the ground have color repetition I really like color repetition you know that and uh, just give her a different kind of an autumn look almost Once I had that down, I did put in a little more of the red because autumn leaves and I like autumn. It's my favorite season and uh, I think it just works so well with the hair, which is way more muted uh, than the tones in, in, uh, on the floor, like on the ground, the leaves. But uh, I think it still works very well together. So I went in with my dark brown Faber-Castell brush, pit brush pen, brush pit pen that's what it's called uh, to uh, color her irises because this is very tiny and I couldn't do that with ink tents I went or I'm going around with my uh, Copic marker to add some lines I did at the hair and now at the sword as I just mentioned earlier in the video just to add a little bit of um, detail and get rid of that fuzzy outline and I'm doing the same thing here on the bigger part of the sword with my polychromos pencil just to have a little more of crisper lines but not as crisp as the Copic marker pencils because <clears throat> I didn't want to have the ink outline look for her like all the way through so I'm uh, opting for colored pencils in this case just added tiny little details here and there nothing too major the major coloring is done with the um, ink tense pencils adding a few more uh, lines on the hair just to give it more texture um, with my colored pencil again and I think it just makes all the difference to have some lines be crisp like here on the armor it just makes the painting look a little more quote-unquote finished or you know sophisticated maybe um, yeah that's that's just something I like to do again the trusty white gel pen for the highlights on the eyes and uh, then I'm cutting down my piece to size um, to fit into my notebook and uh, then I'm well gluing it in and just like I did with Gilia I'm uh, using the same uh, supplies so I'm using the white craft glue to um, glue this piece of paper down because this is 450 grams per square meter uh, kind of paper Oh, yeah, I'm going back to shading a little more because, yeah, why not? But now I'm really gluing my piece into my book just like before. It's going to be the same style. It's going to look a little different, though, than um, the piece for Gilia. I'm using um, different kinds of letter stickers. I'm using... Uh, different letters uh, from the stencil. I'm also not using the same ornaments or the same position of ornaments. It's just very tiny differences, but I like to not have it look like I mass produced these books, though I kind of did. Well, it's not mass production, but it's like two of them. Uh, so I'm doing the same with the uh, ornament, by the way, on the bottom. It's just off camera and I'm sorry because, yeah, I zoomed you in a little more than I usually do. And I was so much in the painting mode and I watched um, interviews while I was painting that I was so, so much in the zone that I forgot that I had the camera recording. And um, I uh, was a little unaware of how big my frame was so sorry about that um, um that, that's the trouble when i'm not recording with audio equipment where i talk and and have the video in real time 
I tend to be so much in this zone that I forget that I do have a camera with me and uh, I'm not aware of the edges of my frame for the camera. Sorry. But these kinds of paintings, they take hours and hours or I don't know how long they're going to take um, before I film. So I tend to not record those with real time and audio because one thing that I don't want to do, I don't want to go over my two hour mark with the videos. And also I don't want to uh, cut one project into two videos. So I want to have one project done in one video for you. So that's why I choose to do voiceovers for these kinds of videos and cut them in a way that they are not boring for you. So using a little more time lapse, I think this is 400 times the speed, I think, if I remember correctly. Anyways, could be 300, I'm, I don't remember. But yeah, that's, that's a little tidbit for why I uh, record videos differently and why I sometimes am working off frame. So I use the same letter stencil than I, that I used for Gilia, but this time around I'm using the uppercase um, letters, not the lowercase letters. And again, I want to go with three lines. So I'm dividing her name into two lines. Uh, having three letters on top, four letters underneath. So she is called Leoline. And um, I think that it, it, it's almost like a pyramid. I just like the um, the pyramid kind of geometric style of her name. Though it's weird, I, I admit it's weird to have her name, which is just one name, no hyphen, no nothing, uh, have it be quote unquote separated between two lines. And I'm using the same brush marker that I used on her eyes to color in my letters here. And after that, I will go to the letter stickers. And this time I don't have to translate because it's the same word in German as it is in English. So um, I'm going to put down uh, couple of stickers. I used different, one, different ones. They're from the same set of the uh, from the Flow magazine. They're also in this beige-ish color, but uh, they're typewriter um, style, so they fit a little more with these uppercase uh, letters. I didn't use these kinds of typewriter style letter stickers for Gilia and the uh, second to last um, video because her letters with the lowercase uh, letter stencils just worked a little more or a little better with um, well the other types of letters. But that is uh, the video for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you have questions, comments, please leave them in the comment section below and I will get back to you as fast as I can. And next week I'm going to have a different, uh, next week, next time I'm going to have a different kind of project for you.